All right, let's get started. Uh, hopefully by this time you've gone through lecture one, where we discuss the tools and, and resources that inform our study of history. Uh, this lecture will be on Rome. And we're going to start with the rise and fall of the Roman Empire, the rise of Christianity, the Byzantine Empire, and the lasting legacy that Rome had on subsequent Western civilizations. Uh, this lecture is important because, as you know, your course is called Medieval World History. And you should know this right off the bat. Medieval history, or the study of the Middle Ages, it starts with the demise of the Roman Empire in the year 476 AD. You know, just keep that date stuck in your head. 476 AD, the fall of the Roman Empire, the beginning of the Middle Ages. We're going to start with this topic, which, you know, honestly, hopefully should be review, since this is the last thing you should learn in the sixth grade school year. All right, so let's begin. Um, before Roman Empire, before the Roman Republic, there was Rome. And Rome was a settlement in the center of Italy near Seven Hills. It was home to the Latins, the Greeks, the Etruscans. And Rome was nice. Rome had a really great climate. Uh, it had natural protection because of the Seven Hills. And the Tiber River was nearby. And you should have learned this in Lecture 1, but waterways are important for trade and communication. Uh, before the Roman Republic even started, Rome had a series of monarchs, uh, a whole bunch of kings ruled the settlement of Rome. And we saw that until roughly the 6th century, when we saw a king named Tarkin the Proud, and he was a harsh king. He ruled real harshly, and the Romans just rallied together, they overthrew him. Uh, then the people did something really incredible that kind of set a precedent for future civilizations. They started a republic where the power in the government belongs not to the guy in charge, but it belongs to the citizens who then vote to select their leaders. And Rome had this system of a republic for the next five centuries, right? What Rome did with this republic was that they limited the power any one person could hold. So at the top of the government, you didn't see just one leader, you saw two, and they were consuls, right? The power was limited. They could only rule for one year, and the people had to vote them in. And their power was always checked by the lawmaking body in Rome, which was called the Senate. Uh, one thing you need to know about Rome, even early on, they really prided themselves in having a really strong military. And the military was good. I mean, they were able to conquer territories left and right, uh, which is good and bad. And it was bad because eventually Rome just got too big. They grew too large, and because of different interests of different leaders, you saw a civil war fall in Rome. And in the thicket of it, you saw a general, a really charismatic guy named Julius Caesar just rise up, and he brought order to Rome. He became a dictator. He declared himself absolute ruler, and people loved him. Um, the Senate did not, though. Remember the, the whole balance of power. So what they did in 44 BC, they murdered him. Immediately after, you saw a power struggle ensue, all right? I mean, the Senate killed Caesar, thinking that they would be the heroes of the Republic, but the, the people loved Caesar. So you saw a power struggle ensue, and Caesar's adopted son, Octavian, he emerged as the winner. And what you saw Octavian do was kind of similar to what Caesar did. He took a title for himself. He called himself Divine One, or, or Augustus. And he thus began the Roman Empire. All right. Augustus's rule was very important. He created a strong empire. Remember, an empire is a group of different cultures and territories that are led by a single all-powerful ruler. And Augustus's rule was impressive. He brought prosperity, peace, and stability. His rule was known as Pax Romana, or the Roman Peace. And the Senate was still in, ex in existence during his reign, but they quite honestly, had very little power. And again, the military, very, very impressive. You saw anywhere from 60 to 100 million people living under Roman rule during this time. Okay. Not just that, but as you saw Rome rise, as you saw the power of the Roman Empire just proliferate, you also saw a new religion emerge, and it was called Christianity. This religion was based on the teachings of Jesus, who Christians believed was the Son of God. Jesus was a teacher. He was a member of the Jewish community. The difference with him, though, was, he, was that he taught that 
there was a heavenly kingdom for all people who followed his teachings. All right. And that was a little bit different from what the Jews, the, the, the Jewish community was expecting. They were expecting someone to overthrow the Roman Empire and, and bring harmony and, and prosperity to the Jewish people. In any case, Jesus' followers, um, you know, just the, the vast amount of them, uh, it started to trouble Roman and Jewish leaders. What they did, they arrested him, they put him to death. Now, Christians believe that Jesus rose from the dead. We call this resurrection, and he went to heaven. His followers continue to spread Jesus' teachings throughout the Roman Empire. So just because they killed Jesus didn't mean that uh, Jesus' followers just stopped what they were doing. Uh, they believed in the message so much that they just spread uh, Jesus' message throughout the Roman Empire. And Christianity just kept growing stronger and stronger and attracting more and more followers as eventually the Roman Empire grew weaker and weaker. And we started to see some weaknesses in Rome. And again, this is all review. Rome starts to decline in the 2nd century AD. Many, many internal problems. Growing expenses in the empire. The empire is too big. Too many lands to uh, control. Too many lands to to manage and territories to manage. The, the military is so big. Everyone has to get paid. Uh, there's just too many expenses in the empire. Uh, there's a disparity in wealth distribution. There are really, really rich people, really, really poor people, and that breeds discontent. There was a decline in agricultural output. The farms just were not producing a lot of food anymore, and political problems. You saw a lot of leaders um, in Rome just kind of buy and compete for power, and this was just really, really threatening the stability of the empire. It got so bad that the empire eventually had to get split into western and eastern halves, and we saw the emperor Diocletian do that. Um, he established the western half and an eastern half. Constantine, the emperor, he moved the capital to the eastern half. He also decreed a cease on all tax on Christians, which doesn't sound that consequential, but if you consider it, Christianity was rampantly on the rise and if Christians now have this free pass where they can preach Jesus's message without fear of retaliation or persecution um, you obviously can kind of connect the dots here Christianity will get stronger and stronger as Rome gets weaker and weaker all right so let's talk about the fall of Rome internal difficulties which we talked about also foreign groups they were just swarming at rome's borders right uh, we saw germanic tribes we saw the huns which would later conquer parts of rome as well but remember the date again 476 a.d we saw germanic tribes come into the empire they conquered rome and rome fell at least the western half of rome fell all right, and we saw the, the last nail in the coffin was led by Clovis. He was a Germanic king. He led the group called the Franks, and they conquered the last remaining Roman uh, land, and it was in Gaul, which we know is present-day France and Switzerland. So with these events, we saw Rome, the, the great Roman Empire, falling. All right, so Western Rome fell, but keep this in mind, the eastern half of Rome, remember, Rome was divided in half by Emperor Diocletian, and there was a Roman capital in the east called Constantinople. That area survived. All right, so we'll talk about that right now. That area survived, and we call that the Byzantine Empire. Um, Byzantine Empire was pretty glorious. You saw uh, one of the early guys, Emperor Justinian, he started to recapture some of the lost Roman land, and he started to rebuild, okay? And it was very impressive what he was able to do. He built elaborate public works. I mean, Constantinople was beautiful. You saw palace complexes. You saw the Hagia Sophia was just beautiful church, very ornately designed, very beautiful. But also, Justinian was known for establishing the Justinian Code. Um, he saw this one standardized legal code for Byzantine life throughout the Byzantine Empire and it lasted for 900 years. It was very impressive. 
uh, focusing in on Constantinople. This was the capital of the Byzantine Empire. Remember, Constantinople was kind of the the city of Constantine, the the former Roman Empire. This was this just ended up being a very very impressive city, um, largely because of its strategic location. It was located halfway between Europe and Asia. It was. It was a great, great city, strategic location. It ended up being a very wealthy city, right? You saw roads filled with merchants. You saw famous buildings like the Hippodrome, which is a, an arena where they had live entertainment, right? Um, as we're talking about the Byzantine Empire, let's not forget that Christianity is not just surviving, but it is thriving. Uh, Christianity remains strong while Rome fell. In fact, you saw Christianity not just affect former Roman citizens, you saw a bunch of Germanic tribes turn Christian as well. I mean, just this message of Jesus was just so popular during this time. All right, and during this time, we saw the Christian church. Okay, that's the organization of Christians who follow Jesus' teaching. They started to develop this church structure where there was a priest leading Christians at a local church a bishop that was supervising several priests, and there was a head bishop known as the Pope who led the Christian church. Okay? And in spite of the fall of Rome, the city of Rome still uh, remained as the home of the Pope, which was the center of this new Christian church. Now, as the Western Roman Empire fell and the Eastern Roman Empire was starting to survive and thrive under the new Byzantine Empire, uh, we saw... For the first time disagreements in Christianity. All right? Christianity in the Byzantine Empire was just different. In the West, you saw that the Pope was the final authority. The buck stopped there. The Pope was the final authority on all religious matters. But in the, in the East, though, in the Byzantine, the Byzantine empires considered themselves the final authority, not the Pope. So they had the last say. They did not defer to the Pope. The Pope was not that important to them. And they also just had differences in theology. For example, the Byzantine Empire, Leo III, he banned the use of icons. Icons are religious images like, you know, uh, a depiction of Jesus Christ suffering on the cross. That is an icon. Uh, stained glass windows, these are icons. So Leo III said, hey, all icons, these are idolatry, okay? We're going to ban them, um, and all Christians just should not be using icons in religious worship. Now, the Pope in the West disagreed with that, and what he did was he excommunicated the Byzantine Empire. And what this kind of sparked was a schism in the church, an official split. And in the West and in the East... You didn't see just this one Christian church. You saw two Christian churches emerge, the Catholic Church in the West and the Orthodox Church in the East. Okay? Now, that's kind of where we're going to close off. And let's, let's, let's just end by talking about the lasting legacy that Rome had on all Western civilizations because this is really where your study of history is going to start this year. The Roman legacy. Right? Rome was impressive on all accounts, but there's few things that we should really hone in on to really get a sense of Rome's lasting legacy. Right? Let's focus in on art, philosophy, language, architecture, Christianity, and republicanism. Right? The slides here are going to explain all that. Your textbook is going to explain all that, but just a few notes. Roman art like mosaics. You still see mosaics today. You see that art form where they take shattered glass and they just create something holistic and beautiful. You see that all throughout Europe. You see that art form prevalent even today. You see Roman philosophy and there's this philosophy that you should be aware of called Stoicism. And Stoicism is this idea that was actually originating in, in Greece, ancient Greece by this philosopher named Zeno. And Stoicism, what, they, what it values is virtue, duty, and endurance. These are values that Romans love. 
And these are values that are integral to this idea of citizenship. Now, citizenship, what it is, is that there's this relationship that individuals are going to have with their mother country. Okay? What the country is going to do is it's going to provide protection. It's going to provide security. It's going to provide welfare for the citizens. But it does this in exchange for the participation from its citizens. Citizens are expected to be actively involved in society. We see that legacy here in America. If you are an American citizen, you don't get a free pass here. The country will protect you. The country will provide for your welfare. The country will make sure that you are secure here, but you don't get to live here for free. It's expected that you're going to vote. It's expected that you're going to pay taxes here. It's expected that you're going to be a good citizen here, right? So you see Rome's lasting legacy in philosophy. You see it in la the Latin language. The Latin language, if you don't know this, it is the basis for several European languages. You see Latin it, uh, being the roots of languages like Italian, Spanish, French, Portuguese. These are all, all European languages that were somehow centered around Latin. You see architecture, Rome's legacy in architecture. You see aqueducts, which are bridge-like structures whose purpose is to bring fresh water into cities and towns. You see paved roads. Rome had paved roads. They built over 50,000 miles of roads. And roads were important because they're able to allow people to transport themselves in a safe manner, in a well-paved manner, so that they can get from point A to point B with very little to rest. The preservation of Christianity, this is another legacy of Rome. You saw this with Emperor Constantine. He said, do not attack the Christians. Christianity thrived. Today, we look at Christianity as the largest religion in the world today. And even if people are not religious, we know that Christianity is the foundation for much of the Western moral code. And lastly, we can't ignore this lasting legacy of Rome, republicanism. Right? And I know this is pre-Roman Empire days, but republicanism is important. We saw in Rome the roots of representative governments. We see that in America. We see that in England today. This is a very valuable, very unique, and game-changing system of government that we can thank the Romans for. All right. So this lecture, we kind of covered a lot of ground here. We started with the the rise of Rome, the Roman Republic, the Roman Empire, the rise of Christianity, the downfall of Rome, the rise of the Byzantine Empire, and that's we close with the legacy of Rome. There's a lot of ground we covered, and I know I breezed through a lot of it, but again, I'm kind of banking on the fact that this is all review for you, right? In any case, if some of this stuff is unclear, you know, listen to this lecture again, look through the slides, because it's important that we have a firm grasp on Rome, especially the fall of Rome, kind of sparking uh, the development of all of Western Europe uh, in the Middle Ages. We, we really need to know this well to make sense of what happens in Europe following this time. All right? Thanks, guys.